Okay, so I just got in inspirational flashes of ideas of how to do this in a better way because uh, Tang Yi and Blue Whisper took so long because I did go through the story because that one it's important to go through why I ended up dropping it and all that stuff. Um, the next character that I was going to talk about, I don't think I'm going to talk about yet because the problem is, uh, there's two characters that I have to talk about at the same time because it's really complicated and it's a ton, a ton, a ton of spoilers that I have to go into for you to understand. So I think I'm going to skip that person for now and talk about him at the same time as I talk about the other guy. Basically, I'm saying it's going to be cut into smaller videos. And it's probably going to be based on how many characters at a time I'm talking about. Because if I skip that person, now the rest of them, I do have ties between them. But like I say, I don't know if this is entirely accurate to say that this is the way they're actually tied together or not. I don't know if I listed them in the correct order of favorite, least favorites to favorite. Because it kind of depends what part of what aspect of them you're talking about, really. So, exploring characters. What makes the characters unique? And what makes them similar to people? Like, this is such a huge topic. It's no wonder I'm getting lost trying to figure out how to film this and present it to you. My word. Um, so, skip that person. And we won't say that he's in place five. Because in a way, that's a little bit unfair. Because in a way, I think it's just the show itself. Like, the character is too boring for me to put any higher. And that's not very nice. Because that character was pretty cool in and of himself and what he was like. So I'll explain what that means once we actually get to the other character and we can talk about them at the same time. So I'm going to skip to what I'm, I'm going to loosely call this place four. I don't know if it's right to put these people there. I don't know if any of this is right. I'm second guessing and doubting myself and overthinking absolutely everything. So we're just going to go with this the way it is. You can loosely take this as least favorite to favorite, but at the same time, this is not entirely accurate. And so. We are now going to talk about Mu Ching from Never Say Goodbye and Yi Chong from Autumn Cicada. Okay, Never Say Goodbye. Okay, the funny thing actually, putting these two together, the funny thing is these two characters are very, very similar in the job types that they have. Um, Mu Ching is his, uh, what do you call it, undercover name because Liu Yun Wan is an undercover cop. Never Say Goodbye is the story of Mu Ching and um, another character that are actually undercover cops trying to take down a drug organization. They are infiltrating this group. Oh my gosh, how come I can't remember what it's called? <laughs> the name of the group suddenly ran away from me. I can't remember what the group's name is. This Drama is the only one of Jaloon's that I actually watched with my sister. Okay, I watched Lost Tomb 2 with her, but because his character in there doesn't really count. This is the only one that I have actually seen with my sister. The only main character my sister has seen in play so far. She wants to see the other stuff but hasn't got there yet. Because her list is as long or longer than mine is of things we want to watch. So she just hasn't got there yet. Especially because I just went through them all. And it's annoying for her when she watches stuff so, so recently after I watched it. Because <laughs> I talk a lot about the show that I'm currently watching. Oh. Hold on one sec. I had to get up for a second and I forgot I took my ring off and didn't put it back on. <laughs> Oops, okay. And I got my ring back on. Don't wanna lose it. Um, what was I saying? So Never Say Goodbye got delayed slightly because I watched the first 14 episodes by myself. Or no, sorry, the first 13 episodes and I was like maybe 10 minutes into the 14th episode. And then I backed up and rewatched all of that with my sister and then watched the whole rest of it with my sister. <sighs> The problem with this drama, it was really good and really cool up to a certain point, and then both me and my sister agreed, without being influenced by each other because we were watching it at the same time, both of us agreed that it was really good up to a certain point, and then it kind of started falling to pieces, and then it totally fell to pieces. I still don't know why, like the focus on the different scenes was all wrong, they put them in the wrong order and they focused on the wrong things, and to me... One of the reasons that Mu Ching is down so far is because, to me, this is one of the few characters that Jilun actually took out of character. <laughs> and I don't know whether it's his fault, per se, or whether it's it's more the script writing's fault. Um, Because the thing is, Mu Ching, when he is 
Mooching is easier to say than his other name, plus for most of the drama, he's Mooching. He, they, they use his other name very randomly and rarely, and he's Mooching is the name you hear all the time, so that's the one that I'm used to calling him. Um, at the start, Mooching had a fiancé named Rong Yu, and she ended up dying while they were in the middle of a, an operation, and he blamed himself for her death, and Rong Yu's brother, Rong Yao, also blamed him for Rong Yu's death, and this is something that he has hung up on for the entire drama, because there's this other girl, Ku Ching, that's in the drama, that because of the undercover work, he's supposed to be a couple with her, but he doesn't actually, he's still hung up on Rong Yu. So, to me, Mu Ching, uh, Jalun, does an epic job of being, like, a person that's gone through this tragedy that is very much hung up on the past, but because of his job, has to be able to move past it. He has to work with Rong Yao, even though Rong Yao told him to his face, I'll be your partner when it comes to business and work, but forget it. I absolutely will not forgive you for what you did to Rong Yu. I still hate you for that, and so we've got nothing outside of the, the actual um, professional setting that we're in. That is the only way I will look at you is in the professional setting of I'm the policeman and you're the undercover policeman and we have to work together in order to get this done. Outside of that, when it comes to personal life, we've got nothing. And so he's dealing with that and he's dealing with coaching and he's dealing with his memories and Jaloon does an epic job of portraying how that makes him feel. One of the things that I think the show itself did wrong was that like as it got further to the end, it focused on what... Um, being undercover did to the other undercover agent, because there's two undercover agents, and I don't know, like, sticking spoilers all over the place and all kinds of things are going to be pretty random. I don't want to have to spoil things. I mean, I don't want to be spoiling things, but at the same time, spoilers are going to be in here. I will try not to spoil, but at the same time, they're going to pop up. So I'm sorry if you hate spoilers and you haven't seen these shows. Um, but there's another undercover agent, and the show focuses on the other undercover agent and what that undercover agent had to give up in order to be undercover without being found out and what kind of an impact that had. And I'm fine with all of that. And it's good that they focused on that. The problem is every time that Mu Ching started to bring up how it was affecting him, this other undercover agent somehow every time kind of twisted it back around to being about them instead. They understand Mu Ching, but at the same time, every time Mu Ching brings up because Muqing being undercover, he has become best friends with Rushang, who is a drug dealer. They have lived because of, like, trying to build himself up in this drug gang and stuff. He has been, like, best friends slash brothers with Rushang for an entire year or two before this point. And then everything they go through in the show, they are so close. And yet, like, Muqing's like, how am I supposed to arrest him and take down this gang and, like... Go back to being myself and like how does he deal with that how does he deal with going back to being who he is and like backstabbing Rushong and all this stuff but every time any of that really comes up the other undercover agent goes yeah I get it because me and everything I've been through and I'm like would you stop that we need to know your side of it too and we need to focus on your side of it too that should be brought out because like each one of them had to give up something else each one of them had their own struggles but like this under other other undercover agent was not undercover in the same way that Muqing was for as long as they were. And yet the show tried to pretend that this other covers, this other undercover agent had a relationship with somebody in the gang as well. And they try to pretend that these two relationships are on the same level when they aren't. Muqing was like best friends with Rushong for years. Super close, living next door to him constantly, constantly with him. Like almost 24-7 they were with each other so much. Whereas build with this person is down here somewhere. The other undercover agent was not with this person as much, did not have the same type of relationship with them. It was nowhere near as complicated. It was nowhere near, like, it just was not the same. And yet the way the show was doing it, they it was making it look like it was on the same level and almost worse. And I'm like, the balance is all off. And then the reason, hold on, I have to plug this in because it's, uh, uh what do you call it? I'm running low on battery. Grr, now I have to use the stupid laptop mouse to do things because I had to unplug my mouse because I don't want to unplug my uh, 
external hard drive and I only have two ports in this thingy so in order to plug my phone in because the actual plug-in is way over there it won't reach so I can only plug it into my laptop and yeah. The way that I think that he took Mooching out of character slash the script took him out of character and this is the second one already because I said Chang Yi I feel like was taken out of character. Mooching was taken out of character when it comes to the relationship I think. Because the way that we saw him interacting with Rang Yu in the past, they were constantly like, he always had his arm around her. Or like pressed up against her shoulder. Or like touching her face or her, her feet or whatever. Like they were constantly touching each other and like a very cuddly kind of touching. Because like they're going to get married. They're engaged. Very, very, very soon are they going to get married because they're talking about already taking the wedding photos and everything. So like they're they're touching each other all the time. They're very much adorably romantically touching each other kind of relationship and yet spoilers in the present when he finds out that Kuching is wrong you that one scene in the hospital was amazing I wanted to break down because like that was amazing the way he was talking to her and stuff before that in the scene when he thought she was dying it was way overdone they had so many flashbacks they had it so drawn out it was so emotionally manipulative that i did not enjoy that at all the hospital scene was epic and spot on after that the focus of absolutely everything went completely wonky and then like the, the next time like literally the next scene we get to see of them being them they're casually walking along a beach, just kind of holding hands, like a foot apart, holding hands and talking about work. And then they kind of meander around in the topic to sort of about themselves and they're kind of facing each other from a foot away. He literally told her it doesn't matter what face she has and what name she has now. And this is still his wrong you and it'll always be his wrong you and he'll always love her the same way. I'm sorry, but I don't believe it. I do not believe this is the same couple. That literally felt, the way that it was being portrayed, it literally felt like he had finally let go of Rong Yu and forgotten Rong Yu and moved on with his life and is now in love with Kuching. That is what it felt like. It did not feel like a return to my dead fiance has come back to life and I am now with her again after three or something years of believing she was dead and she's now alive again in front of me and this is how you're casually walking along with her <sighs> doesn't even feel like the same character when it comes to everything else in the show like even when it comes to like the business itself it feels like he uh Muching kind of became a little bit dumb because all of a sudden he's like really relying on other people to make decisions about stuff that Technically, they don't have any business making a decision about because he's the one that knows Rushong. Mu Ching knows Rushong, and yet he starts making some stupid decisions and relying on other people to dictate how he's going to handle this when it's him that should be because he knows what's going on. Like, he knows Rushong, etc., and yet he's. I don't know. Like, what the crap? He kind of got dumb in the end. And, like, the whole show basically fell apart because I'm, like, I mean, like, especially once the other undercover agent is free because, like, their part of the job is done, so they're free and their job is over. And what happens? Scene after scene of them completely yanking Mooching out of his undercover job that he is not done with yet. And yet, let's completely mentally destroy his ability to be an undercover cop because you're completely taking him out of his Mooching character. You're pulling him out of it and then expecting him to still function and be smart about his undercover job. <sighs> so basically it was like really well done up to a certain point and then it slowly starting to fall apart and then it just like crumbled like a cookie on the floor and I'm like, you disappointed me so badly with the ending of this show. And I feel like, like, I really do think that Mooching, like, <sighs> Jaloon's character was being taken out of character especially when it came to the love interest part, but also when it came to just himself. It kind of, the shift of the whole focus of the show, it reset itself and the focus was elsewhere. And I'm like, doesn't really feel like the same drama anymore. These don't feel like the same characters anymore. This is what I wrote about uh, Mu Ching back at the time that I was watching it. I said, he's below Yi Chung, I think because he doesn't stick to his characters well, nowhere near as bad as what Blue Whisper did, but still. There were places where like, that just, 
didn't feel strong enough. He was swayed too easily in a few places. He is smart. He is the one in the thick of things, but several times he let someone else, the worst namely being deferring to the other undercover cop. However, Mu Ching is pretty epically cool otherwise. Like, his character is fairly unique. I mean, pretty unique in the way that, like, because his, apparently the way Liu Yuan, Yun Wan was and the way Mu Ching is, the character himself comments on one point that it's really hard to be Mu Ching because Mu Ching is so different from what he is naturally. He himself is a lot more outgoing and says a lot more. And he's like, it is so hard to say less in order to stay in Mu Ching's character. And I have to say so little because I'm supposed to be the cool, calm, level-headed, quiet observer type. And that's not me. It's so hard. <laughs> it's pretty fun watching him do that. So that's probably the most unique thing about him. And like the looks he gets on his face sometimes because he's like, can't say that because it's not within character. Can't do that because it's not within character. Like, yeah, it's so hard to hold back sometimes. And it's just, it's hilarious watching him do that because he's like, I want to say something and I can't. Um, he thinks fast and adjusts fast. He like, because he's an undercover agent, he has to make so many decisions at the snap of how do I get out of this? Um, and that, that's his job. He's an undercover policeman, but he's also a drug dealer, which I find very interesting because in a lot of the shows where there's an undercover cop, they somehow magically get away with like sabotaging absolutely everything and never getting caught where like it's to the point where they almost aren't even selling drugs, even though they're supposed to be a drug dealer. And they just like never kill anybody and they never sell drugs because they always somehow magically like the drugs get lost or like whatever. And I'm like, that's a little far-fetched, but Mu Ching undercover, he is definitely selling drugs. He doesn't stop the drugs from being sold. And two, he actually like he gets into fights and like beats people up and like he's a rough and tumble drug dealer. Even though he's an undercover cop. Like he plays the part well of being an actual rough and tumble drug dealer. The further on it goes, the more it's like, okay, this is getting to be more and more luck rather than skill, which is really annoying. But yeah. He's pretty cool in that way, like I really liked Mooching up to the point where the story itself was falling apart. I really like Mooching. In a way, he should be way higher on the list of favorites. He really should be. <laughs> but in another way, because he kind of gets taken out of character and the whole story is falling apart, and I'm just like, eh. he ends up being lower on the list. Um, yeah, there, I keep reaching for my mouse and I can't use my mouse right now. Coincidentally, hilariously enough, Mooching and his love interest in this show is like least favorite to most favorite couples romantic couple my least favorite point number six was Changi and Yunhe from Blue Whisper because it was not love the number five on the list is Mu Ching and his love interest um mostly because of her but like they can be a couple or they can be co-workers they can't be both you guys suck big time at being both. And that's where a whole lot of the story actually fell apart, was them trying to be both. So, moving on from Mu Ching up to Yi Chung. Like I was reading in that, I said that uh, Mu Ching was above Yi Chung, but in this list that I'm telling you right now, these two are tied at four. <sighs> Give or take a little. Yi Chung from Autumn Cicada. This show, Autumn Cicada, there's a whole lot of politics that I do not want to get into. I don't want to get into the polit political side of it, and I don't want to get into the historical side of it, because there's way too much information, like, way too much real history involved in that that I do not know enough about, and I don't want to get attacked for being insensitive towards something that I know nothing about or etc. So like, I hate politics and I love history, but when it's history, okay. Autumn Cicada is set in 1940 something, I believe. Like it's centered around the real historical events of the Japanese invading China and they took over Hong Kong and were controlling Hong Kong. And the communist party was one of the parties that was fighting back against them. So Yi Chang is a spy. He is a communist spy in the Japanese army. His code name is Autumn Cicada. Um, he is supposed to be like his job basically is to be giving like to cripple the Japanese army from within the, the Japanese army. 
Um, his character was raised mostly in Japan. It took me forever to figure out that he did, wasn't actually born there. I thought they were saying he was actually born there, but no, he was actually born in China and then moved to Japan when he was really little. And there's spoilers for exactly how that happened. The important, I mean, the thing is, he is a spy and that's the thing. Um, <clears throat> at the beginning of the show, like, he hasn't actively really done anything yet as a spy until the beginning of the show. His Basically, his first job is to go to Hong Kong. And while in Hong Kong, he's supposed to meet up with this other guy because each spy only has, like, one or two people that they know. So he's, his one contact in Hong Kong, the way the show sets it up, he gets to Hong Kong within an hour or two of his only contact getting killed. So he's like afloat with nobody to talk to. He doesn't know who his comrades are. He's like on the brink of getting killed if he, like, I mean, if he tried to talk to somebody and it was the wrong person, he'd be dead on the spot. So he can't talk to anybody about like, are you my comrade or not? The only person that he ends up able to talk to in the whole show is his adoptive brother. And that relationship is epic. Him and his brother, oh, they're one of the best duos ever. I love those two. Absolutely love them. So that's what this whole drama is about. And in like, there's one other character. There's like the two at the same time. There's two main characters. Both of them are spies, but they don't know each other as spies. They know each other in not good ways. They fight a lot. They have a weird relationship through the whole thing. They suspect each other of possibly being a comrade through basically the whole thing, but they can't come out and actually ask each other if they're comrades because like I say, if you ask the wrong person, you die. So they don't dare actually outright ask each other. Plus it's against the rules because in order to keep themselves alive, they can't be spreading the fact too much that they're they're not supposed to know each other because then if one of them gets caught, they have nobody to out because they don't know who the other people are. So they're not supposed to know each other on top of being unable to um, figure it out. So that's one fascinating thing about this show is not only is it about spies, it's also about spies that don't know each other, even though they're working alongside each other without knowing it. They actually help each other numerous times throughout the show without realizing that it's each other that they're helping. So it's actually really cool that way. Um, I feel like the show went on a little too long. <laughs> And yeah, with the ending, but Yi Chong himself, he, his job, like I say, is a spy. He's a lieutenant in the Japanese army. He's also a spy, um, because he's actually a, um, basically undercover. Like I say, this is the only, there's the two that, um, Jaloon plays that are like undercover some things. One of them is a spy and one of them is an undercover cop, basically the same job. <laughs> um, his family in Autumn Cicada, um, spoilers his family he saw his birth mother die and he barely knew his dad because that's when he went to china he was actually kidnapped <laughs> by a chinese man so he's got his father and he's got his younger sister and he's got his adoptive brother yi chong is extremely intelligent i love it when his temper flares <laughs> One thing that makes me drawn to people is when they follow through with what they say they're going to follow through on. And when somebody says, like, a character set up as something and then they don't prove that to me, it drives me insane. This character is set up as somebody that when you reach his bottom line, you're done for. And then they follow through with that. When his temper flares, lol, the yelling matches that he and Miyamoto have... <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't know why I find that so funny. That his character, when his temper flares, I mean, like, he, everything is calculated because he is so intelligent and he's doing such a risky job that everything is calculated. So I'm pretty sure most of those arguments were, like, you know, diversion to, like, distract from what was actually going on and to, like, divert attention and all that kind of stuff. But still, the way he and Miyamoto, half of that is true because, like, he really does get fed up with Miyamoto. <laughs> the two lieutenants that are with the general, his two right-hand men, in Hong Kong, because there's a general and there's Miyamoto and um, Yi Chong, who are his two lieutenants. But I don't know, there's something about people so ready to throw away their life. I mean, yes, if there's no other way and it's to save lives, but maybe it's just because of the ideals he's fighting for. Yeah, I had an issue watching this show because communism groans loudly. Is he. <sighs> 
why did it have to be communist spies? Why do they have, why do the communists have to be the heroes? I don't agree with communism in any shape or form. Like I said, I'm not going to get into the politics and etc. but no, communism, no. Why did it have to be communists? But yes, Ch uh, Yi Chang actually kills people, which is appropriate given his job. But as a sol both as a soldier and as a spy. But so many shows somehow avoid this. Like I'm telling you, like with the drug stuff, where somehow they magically seem to get out of actually killing anybody. <sighs> In a way, like it's believable and I'm happy that they don't end up killing people because it's not like I want people to become murderers. That's not my point. Even if it's someone that deserves to die, like certain people, like I do believe in the death penalty, but there, it has to be done through the right channels and by the right hands. Like not everybody can willy nilly become the one that executes people. There's, there's a, a proper way to go about it. But at the same time, when you tell me that he's a soldier and on top of that, he's also a spy. And then if he didn't end up killing anybody, I'd be like, seriously? Okay. For him not to end up torturing anybody is one thing because most of the people that the show when they have a prisoner, most of them are like communists and he's a communist. So of course he's not going to be the one torturing them. He does have to watch them being tortured a few times and he has to pretend that he's okay with this and not get in the way, which is impressively he does kind of like, like I say, like he gets in the way a few times. It's a little bit way too suspicious, but at the same time, of course he'd be wanting to get in the way. That is his whole point and purpose is to save the communist spies and not let them be hurt. So... It's his risky job is to risk his life to save the others, like, you know. Um, but at the same time, like, I mean, he even took a bat to one guy. I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> he literally gets mad at this one guy because of something the one guy did. And he literally takes a bat and attacks him in the street and tells him to knock it off. Or the next time I come after you, it won't be just a bat. <laughs> I was like, whoa. <laughs> Youch. That power he has that he doesn't shy away from using when it's needed. And his temper. In a way, he's got the worst temper of any Jaloon's characters that I've seen so far. He does. He lets it explode. Like, yeah. The most unique thing about him, he really doesn't back down on what he says. Someone in the show um, says that he shows no mercy when offended. I think is the words he was using and I think they mean like basically you cross the bottom line and even if it takes a bit he will pay you back for it like like I say when he kills people there's a there's a few people that he killed that like he could the one guy in particular that I'm thinking about it was like he confirmed who he was and what he did and boom he killed him I'm like whoa huh, you you almost did that like so unexpectedly that I just about jumped I was like whoa <laughs> just like when he went after the guy with the bat I was like yoy okay <laughs> He is fast and he is focused. Um, yeah, we'll go like that, that. That's starting to touch on the love interest. We'll go into that a little bit more after, I think. I'll go through the list of love interests and stuff because I was kind of comparing because it's interesting. Even when it comes to the love interest in, in Jaloon's stories, even those are unique because the type of character he plays versus the type of character the girl is, some of them are very similar and some of them are like very different. And even that is very interesting what it ends up doing with the shows that he's in. So that's why Yi Chang is unique and that's why his story is unique. And he did a very good job of... <sighs> My alarm went off and stopped the video. <clears throat> I was almost done and almost moving on. He does a very good job of keeping Yi Chang in character. Like I say, one of the disappointing things about Mu Ching was that I don't think he was really in character and the whole story kind of fell apart. Autumn Cicada, there was a couple of resets, so it's kind of annoying, but the consistency of the story was consistent. I don't think it fell apart at any point. It went, it dragged on a little too much, but I don't think it fell apart at any point. I was a little bit annoyed with the reset and the way that it was happening. It kind of almost started feeling like it was dragging its feet. And then there was a little bit about the ending where I was like, oh, come on, that is so out of left field, like, ugh. but that would get into a lot of spoilers. And it's possible that the only reason Yi Chang is so low on the list is because he's a communist, which is a little bit unfair because he is pretty epic. Yi Chang is actually pretty epic. 
he's like really cool and really consistent and what he ends up doing. Okay. Um, I don't know if Never Say Goodbye is also one that's like dedicated to undercover cops, but Autumn Cicada is definitely like they make a point at the end of the show to tell you that this show is dedicated to the memory of real people that really did this at that time. It's dedicated to the people that were um, in the past dedicated to freeing Hong Kong from the Japanese invasion. So it made a point. That show is one that made a point of saying that's the purpose of this show is to show you the heroes and what they did, pretty much. Um, the only other one that I remember that actually made a point of saying this is our point of this whole show is to purposely um, dedicate it to the people that did this is the, one of the next ones we're going to talk about, which is Blue Flame Assault. And so we'll get there in a minute, but since my alarm went off, I have to get up and deal with that, and then I'll start on the next two characters. Stay tuned. <laughs> 